All right, so we're back at a Sunday fun day. I have no idea how these videos are gonna interconnect or intermingle. Uh, this will probably be a continuation, but it might not, so uh, we're just gonna roll with that. Now, last night I was out here till a little after midnight, crawled under the truck. We got the oil filter off, got the big bell housing bolt in. We got the oil filter back on. We got the brace from the passenger side motor mount to the passenger side bell housing in. I have not done that on this side. I didn't have any space to film it, so I figured I'd just do that over here. Driver's side, uh, I've got my screen door up. I've got the fans rolling. Uh, it's Sunday, but SK, uh, part like three of four, I guess, showed up. And conveniently enough, it's the freaking swivel sockets that I wanted. That's the main reason I purchased what I did. <laughs> and uh, they finally shown up. I'm not gonna get to do a tool haul with them pristine. I'm gonna throw them right into use because top bell housing bolts are a pain. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've kind of pinned out a quick list here. So crank position sensor, that's gotta go back in because I took it out. Uh, the bell housing bolts, we can hopefully knock that out. The dust cover, uh, if I'm thinking correctly, we wanna put that on before the starter, obviously. Uh, kind of reverse order there, right? Starter next. AC compressor. Uh, looking forward to getting that off of the fender well for the first time in a long time. Alternator is somewhere in the bed of the truck right now. We'll see if we can dig it out. At that point in time, I don't know if we're going to go in order of the list or just whatever we're doing, but uh, obviously we need to get the belt on. We would need our tensioner somewhere over there. We would need this deal. I realize now I need to put the coil on here. Power steering pump obviously plays a role in that. The fan, the belt, the radiator. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the fan first or the radiator first. We'll figure it all out as we go. The core support, uh, I've done part of this. I think I told you last night I was gonna do that. We still have the two bolts here, mirroring two over on this side. But uh, this I cleaned up pretty good uh, for our condenser. And there are little dots on the top of this both pieces of plastic i think you can actually see them because they're holding dirt still but there's a dot and a dot the bottom front is going to have like adp or you know the manufacturer stamp or something if you were to pull the washer off this bushing it would just be rubber the back bushing has like a metal kind of impregnated washer uh, that recesses in so that would be the correct orientation for both of these I didn't exactly remember where the hood release cable went, so I just kind of stuck it there for now. It seemed to kind of conceal it and go with the natural routing. Uh, so first order of business is probably going to be to throw those two bolts in. My step stool is back because I just did the screen. There's also the one here, uh, which you can see the bracket. And if you think you screwed this up when you take this off your truck because there's no paint right here on the core support side, that's just how the factory did them. This was fully assembled when they sprayed, so this will be a primer piece. Uh, you can dress that up if you want to. Coming in over, so coming down to the grill guard, you can see this is kind of off, and the reason for that is not bolted to the frame anymore. And that's because that bracket right there should have a bolt that passes through the grill guard and that. If you're curious what that is, I have to come over here. And that brace, it does the same thing with the grill guard, that actually holds the triangular brace for our trans cooler that sits behind our condenser. So sort of like right down in here, you know, so I'm gonna for sure get that bolt in because I want to pull this bolt on the driver's side to size it to know what I need to pick up for the lost bolt over there. Uh, coming in next, trans cooler lines, this might be a problem. Uh, one side's gonna mount up with the starter, there's a bracket for that. And then if you recall, they sort of like run under, you know, your crankshaft pulley and come out over here. There was a bracket, the zinc bracket, that like slid over two studs right on that side of the timing cover. There's bolts here and there's no studs. Um, I might rig up an aluminum bracket or something uh, using the uh, LA style motor mount provisions of the boss that's still on this block. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. If I'm remembering correctly, and it's been a while, but the other thing that goes over here is the coil, and I'm inclined to say that the coil had a bracket that held trans cooler line bracket, <laughs> all right? Uh, we'll figure it all out as we go. The exhaust, I don't know how I'm gonna snake that thing out without cutting it. That's what I wanna do. 
Uh, we were able to get the front O2 sensor off yesterday. The back one will not budge. Uh, we were starting to round out my socket. So the good news is there's a clip that's actually accessible there. So I think I'll be able to take that off and then if I can slide it out the back or come forward with it, we'll do that. Why do I need to do that? For the AEM kit, for that O2 sensor, I need to be able to data log. That's why we can't like piggyback off of something. So I'm going to attempt to get that figured out. Uh, at some point along the line, the hood will go back on. Obviously I want to get as much done in here as I can without the hood because it's super convenient. Uh, saves my neck and head, spine as well. The grill, I took the grill off if you will recall, trying to get the engine out without taking the hood off. Uh, then we kind of move in here, this is sort of more interior stuff, so like backup cam, lights, that would be referring to if I want to do the interior lights, which I'm not sure that I do. Headlights, I've had headlight and fog light LEDs on order for since Memorial Day, and they just, every like Friday I get an email and there's a new expected date, and it's always like far, far off in the future, so kind of getting burned out on that. Third brake light, we'll see what we can do. Uh, the grill guard bolt, that's what I just covered over here. Obviously, you know, like battery, I didn't pin down electrical connections. Uh, something I'll cover right now. If you look down here, over the driver's side valve cover, you'll see like the plastic convoluted tubing, you know, all that mess of stuff. And then there's a ton of sensors and injector harnesses that come off. I had thought about dressing that up in like blue, kind of like fancier loom, maybe even split loom for parts that we had to. I don't know that I'm going to do that. Um, I don't know that I want to draw attention to it. We might have to get this all buttoned up. Obviously, I forgot the throttle body to get on my list. Um, machinist engine builder, he advised, since the engine sat a little while, that whenever I fill this up with coolant, to go ahead and put some water pump lube in there. He said that will give us a better chance of the gaskets and seals staying good. Uh, Typically, you know, like when you dyno something and it doesn't go right into service, it's a situation where if you put it in your truck or your car and fire it up, race car, street car, doesn't matter, uh, you might get like three to five days and then you start having water pump leak, so that's not cool. <laughs> and we're going to try to prevent that. Obviously, all the vacuum connections and stuff, that gives you like a rough idea of what we've got ahead of us. We'll be crossing stuff off as we go or checking it maybe for historical record, who knows. But uh, yeah, the other thing, I'm not sure if you saw these or not, I'll just bring them up. It's Sunday, but these showed up. I think I mentioned it, but uh, they're going to get cut open and I need that 9 16 immediately. I also got a double universal joint that I'm going to pair with this and see if we have an easier time down under the truck. So uh, that said, I guess I'm going to crawl back under there, see what I can get going be up here see if we can get these top two bell housing bolts and the cps so uh wish me luck and the grind starts now all right so sometimes i do actually say say what i do and do what i say and bag and tag stuff makes my life a lot easier the old little uh, kc tool bag stuff comes in right so transcooler core support i did my stupid little drawing where i know exactly what it is this looks to be a number eight by 20 millimeter it's obviously you know it's got the uh, crown head so you've got the washer fixed it's not like a loose washer keep that in mind again if you pull apart or you know acquire a truck missing the core support same thing on these passenger core support and driver's core support exact same 8 by 20 so again driver's side you've got one two you technically have three but again I put that in so I could crawl in and out of the truck easier passenger side driver's side I should say right here and then of course little bracket that I showcased to you I want to get that in so I can pull that bolt see if it's the same size or something different and then I'll know what I need to order for this side oh it's so nice when there's stampings on a bolt and I know that it's SAE or metric so in this case 8.8 .8, that tells me this is metric this is a 8 by 25 millimeter and then it has a flat and a lock uh, that's what comes in over here through our grill guard support and anchors in I guess to like a rib nut type of a deal so this is what I'm gonna have to order so we can mate this one back up that's been loose and missing for a long long time so I'll finally take care of that and uh, yeah I'm gonna thread this sucker back in this is uh, one of the first times I've used that Ghidorah ratchet down there the extension perfect the sockets amazing uh, glad I use the ratchet because in use you tend to like it a little bit better than just kind of like bench inspection so I'm going to call that good, get this anchored back up. Alright, so it crawled in here and did not have a light, and I need a light, so I had to crawl back out. But, 
all along the cal here i've got various extensions i've got the mirror i've got some brand new magic rings i haven't even made a video on those will be for those two bolts there crank position sensor and then these two guys right here that's my top two bell housing bolts if i'm thinking correctly the trans dipstick i think that tab is gonna be something we've got to factor in Almost want to say there's something on the driver's side too. I'm just gonna to have to feel around and look with the mirror. <laughs> and then while I'm in here, I very well may connect our fuel line. That's our little adapter fitting. The factory one is right back there. The metal looking deal just sort of made it go away and I can see it again. Uh, might connect harnesses, might clean that up. I thought I'd clean these harnesses better, but uh, we shall see. So I'm just going to be digging around in the back there and see what we can get done. Just to give you an idea of the wonders of this, here's my arm, there's my chest, where you see the red from Mopar. And uh, I'm dug into the accessory bracket, and this arm is getting pierced by plastic fuel injectors. The good news is this little uh, Coke and Ratchet that I ordered the 7 inch version of and they sent me the super stubby short guy, well, it'll clear this for me. <laughs> and thanks to the low backlash, we are almost got this thing tight, so uh, it's a little easier for me without the camera, but again, with the kegger gone, like, thank you, let me, I've got one hand, so uh, I'm going to set you down, zoom this thing out, pick you back up, and yeah. See right out my arm, that, that injector is sharp. So that's the baby little ratchet, I mean it's literally palm sized. There's the, what's supposed to be a semi deep socket. And there it is, and it is finally ratcheted in there. So if you're willing to sacrifice and bleed a little bit, you can, you can probably get this from this angle too. So I'm gonna try to torque this down a little bit better than that. And then the joy is we get to go to that side and do it again. Random wish list item. If that swivel would let the light, you know, if it's just like a little bit longer of an arm coming out of there and we could get like a full 90 degrees where I could basically pin that against the top of the cow, that would be awesome. But uh, we use this little little mini man right there, got the job done for us. The uh, socket's about longer than the ratchet, but it worked. <laughs> so uh, if I come in over here, this is kind of cool with the mirror, and I did somehow remember correctly that there was a tab back here. If I, I think, yeah, uh, you're looking really well at that uh, plug there, but not necessarily the reflection. So let's see here. What you have to remember is that the shiny stuff is going to be aluminum. And I don't know that this is gonna work like I wanted it to. If I, if I had a third hand, I think we could do it. Okay. So right. Oh man, it's just, you gotta realize, like, you know, I don't have a film crew or anything, so. There we go, beautiful. See the black? That's the engine block. That silver stuff? That's an aluminum bell housing. The grease? That's the top of the transmission. And there is a tab that we want to seat with the bolt. That shiny thing there is our factory fuel line. But you're, you're looking at it. See the black tab right there? It may in fact go to the fuel line. But if you can make out the black piece, like there's the hose, there's convoluted tubing, there you go. Beautiful shot, crooked, it's the best I can do. Just crack in the mirror. That right there is our top bell housing bolt on the driver's side. And whatever that tab goes to, which is either like an electrical support or the fuel line, we want to make sure that we catch that between the bolt and the bell housing. So. My apologies, I can't film that any better, but I assure you it's uh, painful. The water pump is uh, digging into me, and then that stuff there, yeah, it was a lot redder about two minutes ago, but that's actually from those stupid injectors back there. So anyway, I'm going to try, there's the bolt right there. It wasn't where I left it. Uh, so I'm gonna grab that, try to thread it in by hand, see what I can get back there, torque it down, and the top two bell housing bolts will be in. Then we can joyfully move to the crank position sensor, and that's always fun. All right, there's the bracket. I wanted to see what all was affiliated with it. When I grab this, everything in my hand comes up and down. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's taking the factory fuel line 
and then it looks like there's one of those like cable tie you know landing pad things it's going to include that whole run of convoluted tubing where I'm flexing the uh, fourth finger there. So it has a ton of crud. It's basically probably like a strain relief weight support type of a deal. So make sure that you catch that tab, the black tab there between the bolt and the bell housing. Maybe that'll make this stuff a little bit more workable for me too. So I'm gonna thread it in and uh, we'll call those two good. All right, so right there, I think you can see it pretty good. Well, just focused on the oil pressure sensor socket. That's what that tall black thing is, but they're in the background, which you can sometimes see pretty well. That is the bolt that's catching the bracket. So that's all I was trying to show to you there. But uh, if I shimmy it, that thing that's not really in focus, but clearly sticks out above like a grease stain, that's our bolt going into the back of the block through the bell housing. There's the companion on this side that holds the transmission dipstick. And I think that's about as good as I can do to showcase you. So basically to locate either one, find that last bolt on your intake manifold, go straight down and you should find the bolt. And that's probably your best point of reference. So I'm gonna button this thing up and call it good. All right, so my little uh, coking guy coming through in the clutch. This was kind of just a mishap. You'll eventually see a tool haul on it. Probably seen the tool haul before this. Just depends how everything gets released, but um, there was a mishap ratchet, and that, that thing turned out to be perfect for this, so uh, very glad he stuck around. Now, I found a hanging hole for my mirror, which is awesome, and you can almost see the bell housing bolts perfectly with it. <laughs> if I tilt down there, well, I can. The camera just focuses on what's in front. There's that guy. If we spin it this direction, uh, it's probably not gonna happen on that side, but we've, we've spent enough time showcasing that. What I wanna do is put that back in position, tilt it, and man, you just, you can't see it like I can with the camera, but that boss that comes off, oh geez. All right, so see where there's black way back there, and then there's like silver in the middle of it, it just got real blurry. Now you sort of see like that little speck. Go to the oil pressure sensor and then look at that speck of silver. Now see that thing up there that also looks like tapped and threaded? It is. Uh, that's in the head, but the thing below it on the black, sort of above the transmission dipstick, a silver speck, that is our first slot towards the driver's side to try and catch the crank position sensor. I'm going to foolishly move the mirror and see if we can capture it back this way. It's just, the camera has so much to focus on with all the colors and contrast and everything, it doesn't really work for you, but it does for me, uh, type of a thing. But right back there, you know where the CPS goes, and that right here is my CPS. So, I'm gonna grab it. Uh, this one, again, was modified. I had to grind her down, got some anises on there. We're going to drop this sucker in. It's going to orient in this manner just like that. That's the side we had to grind because of the head. And then we're going to have to drop the bolts down, which we have to use a hex side of the bolt. It's right there, it's a quarter inch hex. We can't get a socket on there, it's way too tight with the heads, it's not gonna happen, so you've gotta use a hex. The magic rings are what we're going to use. I'll showcase that here in a second. All right, the crank position sensor is finally in. It was a nightmare. It was bad to begin with. It gets worse with Edelbrock heads. The bracket doesn't want to catch. You have to grind it off, as I think we showcased earlier. You know, when we mounted it ahead of time. I would just install the thing, uh, you know, outside of the truck and then just go to town. If it breaks, it breaks. You know, you have to take it out. That part's not as bad as putting it in. And you'd have to do that if you didn't put it in anyway. So pro tip there, have it installed. If it breaks, it breaks. And uh, just go to town, especially if it's an old one, you know, it's got some years on it anyway. But uh, yeah, that was a nightmare that ate up a ton more time than it should have. And what I think we'll do probably to wrap this part up is get the flex plate installed, or I should say inspection cover, dust shield, whatever you want to call it. And then, uh, Probably the starter. I'm not sure if we'll do electrical or kind of try to group all that together. Uh, I've got to be at work 
6 in the morning the next two days and uh, it's about 7.40 right now. I haven't eaten supper, haven't showered, none of that stuff. So I'm going to try to get the starter and the inspection cover on for this video. Next time we might start doing electrical, uh, AC compressor, alternator, maybe some of that. We'll just see how it goes, but I'm going to get down under the truck and uh, see what we can do. Alright, it's been a while and I forgot what a pain in the butt it is to film under this truck. So, uh, there is a wasp or something. I'm just hoping it doesn't come back. The Hazette 916 HP, that has a 13 16 socket. That is going to be for the nut on the motor mount. The bolt, this is the passenger side by the way, so towards the transmission we would have the nut. The bolt head would be on the front. It needs a three-quarter socket, which I had this set up to film. And uh, right there you can see the breaker bar with the three-quarter socket. <laughs> and it fell uh, as I went to get the camera. So that's that's the setup though. It will be, let me see if I can do this, flipped on the driver's side, which I think you can kind of see it. Let me try. All right, so the thing I just focused on, that is the bolt head that will take a three-quarter socket. It runs through towards the front or the grill or the radiator of your truck, and the nut is on that side. I disagree with that. I like the way this is set up, but I'm just replicating what the factory did. So uh, 13 sixteenths on the radiator side, three-quarter on this side. We'll want to tighten that up. Uh, coming in... We were going to try, after we did the crank position sensor, we were going to do the starter. Now, last night I told you I pulled that filter, got this thing on. Uh, it's the half inch, you give me the half inch socket there for the back motor mount to engine block bolt. That's got to come off. Your zinc bracket goes on. It bolts up here. I want to say that's a 5 8 socket that you need. Don't hold me to it. And I realized as I came down here that that's going to have to come off because the inspection cover has to go on. So the little hole, I think you can kind of see it right here, I think that's going to be our top screw that will actually physically bolt the inspection cover in place. Granted, everything else does too. Uh, not, not sure what that's for. Thinking nothing right there. That sucker is going to be too... If I man, get this thing out of here so I can creep her over, that little boss is going to be our third one, and I think that's the final one in terms of one, two, and three above the brace and between the oil filter. The starter is going to go over here. You can see the bracket for the trans cooler lines. I don't exactly know what bolt holds that in place. I'm wondering if it's not going to turn out to be like a 3 8 by inch and a half. Uh, this, on you know, my truck, a lot of times they are bolted. My truck had a stud with a nut that'll help me swivel the starter in. Uh, that bolt right there, I think you need a 5 8 socket. That is the engine block to the bell housing. And then right here, it's very important that we get that bolted up. So we'll have the bolt head, the bracket, the starter, and then the bell housing. This exhaust is really, really, really getting annoying. It's in my way. I kind of need it out so I can weld an O2 sensor bung because I don't think I can do it under the truck. <laughs> and, uh, there's just not a good way to do it. On the driver's side here, I do not have that brace installed yet. I've got it behind my head. The creeper wheel's about to hit it. Or this red thing, that's a Tecton swivel head. It's got a half inch socket, couldn't break it free. I'm gonna need to get some uh, bigger guns out. But I've got to uh, swivel out of here, try not to drop the camera, try to keep from cramping up. <laughs> and uh, I don't know that we can see it, but I, I think there's a bell housing bolt that I'm going to have to do. Sort of like our middle one we've done the top two, and now I think this one that's probably towards the lower side of the head, I think it's going to have to be done. But uh, I'm going to get on all that again. This is sort of the best I can do on a creeper with a big camera. So I, I do what I can for you. <laughs> again, should have covered all this in disassembly. This is sort of just the reverse. But again, always bothers me when people say it's the reverse. It's like, well, you might be nice to show that. So that's what I'm trying to do. 
It's just in this case, it's uh, not not conductive to filming. So I'm also going to spray this with some degreaser. That tranny is filthy up there. So see if maybe I can clean that up. I don't know that I will ever get a good camera angle. I feel like I did in disassembly of that bell housing bolt. But again, think of having four, you know, three eighths by inch and a half, and then those two big ones that go from the block to the tranny. So I'm going to quit rambling and get back to work.